get that out. Somebody clap for Jesus. So today we are here in Dortmund, Germany for Holy Ghost and Countdown. And this is day one. I know it was short notice. My mic keeps going off and on. I don't know. Is it the battery or? Thank you. The devil is a liar. Everything was fine. Okay. Are you guys ready to do some prayers? Yes. That's right. So today is day one. We have two, uh, three days. Today, all white. Even if you're watching online and you're on your way, you don't have your white. It's okay. You can still come. Tomorrow, I'm giving the shirts. Wednesday is the long dresses. So we're just going to start by thanking God for making it possible for us to come here. Wherever you are, just open your mouth and begin to pray. And if you are watching online, share this video. If you are also in, the, in this place, share it. So that people that couldn't make it can watch. Your family and friends. So they can be a part of it. I'm going to share it too. Looks like a good day is will be blessed.
Lord, to the funeral room. Don't sleep, my day. Keep praying. Don't stop praying. Why are you here today? Lower the music. It's too loud. Why are you here today? Say, Lord, I am not going to go back home the same. I must receive all my blessings. Begin to pray. I am not going back home the same. I must receive all that belongs to me. All my blessings. Take them closer to the 
Sit all the kids and the parents close to that door where the children's room is. God bless you. So they can quickly run into the room and come out. Are you happy to be here today? Yes. If you're happy, clap for Jesus. <laughs> show them, show them.
When I came in yesterday to come check the place, just to check, I just came from the airport. His son started playing keyboard though, the way I like it. Before you know it, it turned to, is it nine vigil? I mean, <laughs> we started worshiping. It was so good. I said, no, we have to put this on live. Before we came live, we had already done like 20 or 15 minutes of it. He was just, it was just, it was just so good. It, 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 he knew exactly what I, it's like they were ready for me. Even on Sunday, I told him, I said, Pastor, on Sunday I can, I can do the, my service after your church service. He said, no, 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 it's okay. My members, I invited all of them, they are coming. I said, okay, do your own church service, 12 to 2. Then from 2 I start. He said, no, it's okay. I said, please, Pastor, because the service is 12 to 2. He said, even if it's 12 to 2, you will still be the one to preach. I said, Pastor, this is serious, though. Like, I've never seen anyone as humble as him. And he's been in ministry over 20 years. Like, it's not like he just started. And I was telling him, I said, this church, I believe you bought this church for me because it was three weeks after they moved to this new location that he messaged Pastor Isaac. So we are, we are enjoying a brand new location. Can't you see how beautiful the church is? Don't you like it? Wow, the sound, everything is perfect. Oh, are you playing one of my instruments? Oh, okay. You have one, yeah. It's still good. All of them good. This guy is so good. His son can do video. He can do. I beg, clap for Pastor Son. His name is Jesse. He's all over. He can do everything. I say, Pastor, I'll take your son with me and go. <laughs> It's an asset, you know, when you have somebody that knows everything, can control the sound, can do the video, can take pictures, can play this, can even touch the choir. What do you know him that taught you guys your song? I mean, clap for him again. Because I would have come early here at 10 o'clock to come and teach you, but he told me he can do it, so I had to sleep a little longer. Anybody that can help a woman of God, a man of God, to make their job easier, Oh, God will really bless them. Because yeah. what we do already. How many people do you see that do 12 hours all the time? <laughs> Pastor said nobody. <laughs> 12 hours, not even one day. Oh. Three days. 36 hours. I just finished one in Italy. Three days. Rested for three days. I'm here off. You know, like, it doesn't even feel like I did anything. And from here, I'm going to Dublin Island for next week. But that one is two days. Friday and Saturday. From there, I'm going to London two days. Friday and Saturday. Then France the next morning. I'll be in the flight. Wow. And then two days later, I'm back in America for Bishop's Festival of Fire. Yeah. <laughs> the kind of strength that God has given me is supernatural. Yeah. I must do the works of him that sent me. My father's work. Yeah. While it is still what? day because when night comes I cannot work while it is still days while I am still alive while I am still young because at a certain point I, when I'm 70 or something I may not be able to fly like I'm flying like this you know when you get older you want to retire or do easy but now it's still day I'm still young and strong there are so many people out there like look at this one now look at that lady on the floor now right who were just worshiping and she just started manifesting. Only God knows how many things are in this one. Only God knows what she's been going through. And since I said chop it off, she's been there laying for almost one month. I had to check her if she's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> one month. Isn't that you? You came to, to tap her. <laughs> Don't show the girl. The one, that one is taking a good nap. So things have, have already jumped up. And we were just worshiping. So just imagine what people are carrying, what people are going through. There are people suffering, just worship, opening worship. It was bad, making her hit her head here, do this, do that, trying to hurt her. So I have to go and do my father's work to free people like this. Yeah. And the videos are very helpful if you stay committed watching it. But there are still some that need laying on hands. There are still some that they need that physical touch. 
and that's why I'm happy for you guys because I think Italy made you guys decide. Some of you are watching the Italy program, you're like, I cannot miss Germany. How many of you felt like that? Show that. <laughs> when you were watching the program, you're like, ha, me, I can't miss this. You have to find money for by force. By fire by force. And you bought ticket. Please bring out that keyboard a little more. Bring out that instrument. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much. So yeah, so Italy was just God sent me there. I didn't even know why I was going there. Not knowing I was going there for one person. And you guys saw how she got her deliverance on Friday. Saturday she got proposed to right after I prayed for them and told them to pick their wedding date. And she was getting up from that prayer. The man had a ring, she had no idea. Her fiance or whatever. And they've been and that was I think one year exactly since he's, they've known each other. And then the next day, she got anointed. Hey, my God. So you that is sitting here, do you know that within these three days, your life can just change? It's not, I'm not talking about one year from now. I'm not talking about one month from now. God is like this. In fact, what is three days? In a matter of 10 minutes, yes. that load that you've been carrying, that pain that has been bothering you for years. You know, this lady has a testimony now from there. Come on, sweetie. Your mic works. She gave a testimony of something that has been troubling her for over how many years? Go ahead. Talk. Is, is the mic loud? Praise the Lord. It's not on. Yeah. Let me see if I can turn it on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you, one of you. For 18 years, I've been battling with something more cry in my body. It makes me uncomfortable that I want to even cut off the place. When I'm holding a knife, it's like, let me just cut it off. Maybe the, what is moving there will just go out from there. When I'm pressing, when I'm doing something that I can easily use to hurt myself, they just rush in like that. I could just, sometimes I just shout and say, come on, get out! Even the, the boy in my house sometimes will come and say, who do you talk to? Every time you are telling somebody, get out, will you shut up, get out? I say, don't worry, you will understand. Praise the Lord. But on that day, that day, not too much talk, not too much prayer, just in, this, on Italy, right? in Italy, Monday, Friday, on Saturday, just a few words, like you, you are healed, you are delivered. He just mentioned the case, and I came out, and that day till now, it has stopped. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God has been faithful. Please celebrate the King of Glory. Hallelujah. And, and look at how beautiful she looks. That's one of the we, the people that got the wigs from that I gave. Don't you like how she looks? And she's also a singer. Oh yeah, give us one, one song. Instrumental. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked. Amen. He has slew the wicked for my sake. Amen. Let those whom the Lord has given rest join me. In singing praise to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord has given me rest from my sorrows. The Lord has given me rest from my sins. The Lord has given me rest from my heart. I will sing glory be to His
from that Italy and now. And this is, we're talking about those few days ago. And she said, I did not even shout out. Ah, ah. I just said, She's, you are healed. Hey, God is so powerful. I beg clap for Jesus. It's not by power, it's not by what? It's not by my, it's not by my strength. It's by the what? The spirit. Say the what? The Lord. Oh, Pastor's daughter sang a song yesterday. Not by power, not by might. With that, when did she come in? By two o'clock. I cannot wait for her to sing it. We were here yesterday. We were here yesterday. Say that. God bless you. She was singing. I just told her, let me hear her voice. Because her brother said she sings. She, it was so powerful. She herself was crying. So when she comes, she will sing it. It's not by power. We don't have to talk too much. Come on, sit down, everybody. Please. I don't have to shout too much. Because some people, they want you to somersault. They want you to jump. They want you to lose your voice. Even though when you pray, they'll say, Woman of God, is that all? This demon is big, oh. <laughs> Woman of God, my problem is blame me, oh. All we need is one word. You are free yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Even if you don't feel free at that time, sometimes it will be you going to sleep that night, you will see an angel coming to chop off heads of snakes, yeah. your dreams or something. Even if I say you are healed and you still feel the pain, I am healed, I am healed. Yeah. You do that and the demon will say, she has faith, now nah, I gotta go. Do you understand? If you, but if you say, but the, but the pain is still there now. There's some people like that. And I'll be asked, I say, is it me that put the pain there? <laughs> I say you are healed, go home. <laughs> some people make the job of pastors hard. It's not supposed to be like that. We are not the ones that do the miracles. It is God that does it. All he wants us to do is speak the word. And angels are waiting. Like, see now, come here, sweetie. This is Minister Stanley. Somebody clap for Minister Stanley. I brought him all the way from Italy. He's been helping me so much. He's been watching me for a long time, almost two years plus or so. I know that the people in Europe have watched me for a long time. And they're very consistent. Clap for yourself. God bless you. He's the one that I told God told me to tell him to pray for somebody. And I, I didn't tell him, I just, after the anointing and everything, I said, who has pain? One guy came out. And he too, he said, he had pain. I said, oh, oh. He doesn't know I'm about to tell him to pray for somebody. <laughs> so you guys watch there, right? So when I said, God is telling me to for you to pray for the guy, he said, oh, really? He was not afraid, but he was, it was unexpected. So it's just a simple prayer. The guy had spinal cord pain that just started not too long ago. A simple prayer. And the boy said, something just came out from this side. I am free, no more pain. He don't be wrong. He said, Minister Stanley has arrived. He said, is there any more? Any more, bring it. It's very funny. I wanted to use him as an example. God told me he had assigned angels that bring out the volume a little more. I like that thing I play. I like hearing keyboard when I'm ministry. God bless you. Yeah? Oh my God, this is so good. Thank you so much. So God told me he has assigned angels to work with me. And I think right now they're over 100. At first they were like 70 something. So now they are wearing their white or looking the way they look like angels just lined up. Waiting for, because angels are messengers, right? They are what ministering what spirits, like they are sent to work with us or what they'll do what God sent them to do concerning. When God gives them instruction, protect this one. Their job is to protect that one because that's the instruction they got. So when God says work with this one, like sometimes you will be in my program, you will feel somebody's hand touching your back. He has felt it before. He has felt it. He felt it in Italy. She felt it in Italy. Even me, there was a time I was sitting in on the stage, right? I said, who touched me? And I was looking at him. He said, not me, oh. Do you understand? So sometimes we may not even call you out. But because you have faith to be healed, or because you're paying attention to the message, an angel could just touch you in the back, and you'll be healed. Sometimes just walking into this premises, you are already healed. Pastor was telling me that on Sunday, that when he came to church, he saw an angel that was pouring, is it 
fire on every member that was walking in. Now that's an angel that is assigned to this ministry to work with the man of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? And God will open our eyes to see it. So let's say now this man is one of the angels. Let's say there are like 100 of them. They are just waiting for me to say the word. If I say you are free, one of the angels will come out from his position, take a knife, chop off the head of the demon. And he will go back like he never, and they are very quick the way they work. Like at the speed of light. You know what I mean? You don't, they don't delay. Sometimes if I command somebody free, I don't need to say, I said you are free, you are free. I walk away. But there's an angel that is going to make sure that this person is free. Because I have spoken the word. Now what could hinder the angel is your own belief. Do you understand? Even Jesus could not perform a lot of miracles in his hometown because of what? Unbelief. If you don't believe, there's nothing we can do. You understand? It's also impossible to please God when you don't have faith, when you don't believe. Do you understand what I mean? It's not good. Unbelief hinders you, not me. You are the one that will go back home with the problem because you don't believe. As of me, I believe in what God can do. I've already spoken the word for you to be free. The angels are already set to do it. But when they come to you and you are doubting, they step back. Because they can't go against the word of God. You have to believe. Right? Jesus kept telling them when he would preach to the people. He said, only believe. Don't doubt. Fear not. Just believe. He kept on stressing it. Sometimes he would have to say, do you believe that I can do this? Before he can even lay hands on them. They say, yes, Lord, I believe. He said, okay, go. You are healed. He had to be sure because even him, Jesus, he could not do any miracles. If he sees that you are doubting, it won't work. So you that is sitting here, I want you to believe that you are here for a reason. There's a reason you came. Thank you, sir. My angel. So there's a reason you came. Some of you, it troubled you that you had to be here. Some of you had dreams. Some of you probably did not even plan to come. But it's like last minute, something kept telling you, you have to be here. It's because God is about to change your situation. It's because there is power here that will fix whatever needs to be fixed in your life. If God made me come here, God will direct people to come. We don't stress like me. I just make the announcement, talk about it on the video. Even if you were only five people here, I will preach as if it's one million people. But out of those five people, I know that there's somebody that this program is for. Like now, look at me. My bishop used to live in Nigeria. And God told him to move to America. Bishop Blessing Samuel. And move to Houston. I started a church there. And then the second assignment was to go and get his daughter back to him. Now you would think that I'm not important to tell you that heaven rejoices when one person, one soul, one person repents. Over what? 99 people that don't need repentance. God values every one person. Every one person counts. Like as a preacher you come, you see only one person, you are disappointed Where is everybody. You don't know if that one person, God will use that one person to win 70 million souls. Do you get where I'm coming from? So when Bishop came to America, one day he was sleeping and he said, God woke him up and said, go get my daughter for me. And gave him my name, Belema Abini. And he got to Facebook, typed the name, and he saw, then I just finished one of my birthday parties, so I had one mini skirt. You know, I was a party girl for years. I didn't go to church for 15 years. With Limo, you know, I like to pose with Limo, and I was very broke. Not posing like somebody that, you know, those posing things now. You fake it and you make it. But me, I never made it. <laughs> you know? So I was out there with short skirt, posing. So when he typed the name, he saw this beautiful girl with big hair, mini skirt. He now had to say, Lord, is she the one? He said, Yes. That is my daughter. Bring her back to me. I love her. 
She's the apple of my eyes. She's an evangelist. He was just telling him so many things about me. So he sent me a friend request on Facebook. He moved him from Nigeria. You don't understand me. He has three branches. Comfortable. <laughs> to come to another country. Where he knows nobody. To start a church. And to go bring his daughter. That's why Bishop always said it in my program. That even if she's the only one. That I brought to Christ. I feel like I did a good job. Because look at what she's doing. Come on, clap for my bishop. <laughs> so he obeying God brought to my own salvation. You see, when he sent me a friend request, I was not very nice because I didn't like friends with pastors. Because most of them judged me because I was very popular back home in Houston. I used to do parties every weekend, so you could see my flyers on the wall, like you saw that flyer on that door. Oh, I had it in all the African stores, with minis get posing. I only put me, or if I'm celebrating somebody's birthday on my flyer, but all my flyer has me. Yes, I was selfish like that. I mean, when I put you on the flyer, are you Princess Belenzi? You understand? So it's like, even if you have not seen me, you've heard my name, you've seen the poster, when you went to an African store or restaurant to eat. You understand? So me, pastors, when they hear my name or see me, they're like, that one, huh? That one that has made all our youths waste in parties. What can, you know, even when I, even somebody invites me to a church and I walk in, the whole church will turn around. What's she doing here? You know? It, it, it's, it's that kind of thing. So me, I was not really into church people. In fact, that time, me, I didn't even believe in deliverance. Even speaking in tongues, me, I thought it was fake. You don't understand? I did not go to church for 15 years. All I did was parties. This thing I'm telling you is not like 10 years ago. I just repented like 3 years ago. I got filled with the Holy Ghost 2 years ago. I started preaching the next day after I got filled with the Holy Ghost. So it's not like this story is from long ago. This is a recent story. Just because you see me traveling, having people come. You think it's easy to go to different countries a church did not invite me. I do my own programs, get my own venues, put my own flyers out, and people come. See, if a church invites you to come, it's different. The church already has an audience for you. But if you are going to a place where you yourself, you don't even have a church there, you don't have a branch, but you know that people will show up. Different countries, I went to Italy a few days ago, now it's Germany, next week Dublin, Next one, London. And it's just been two years. It takes a special grace. It lets you know that God truly called this one. So for a man to leave his comfort zone back home in Nigeria, to move to another place where his whole family are back home in Nigeria, he has no family here, to bring this one lady that was lost, that was written off, that they said, oh, this one is definitely hellfire. Can't you see how she always dresses? Me now, look at me wearing long, long dress. Before, ha, this was abomination. <laughs> you don't understand? After everything, I finally surrendered. After everything, I got filled with the Holy Ghost. I had a powerful Holy Ghost encounter. And the next day, the Holy Spirit, I heard it clearly, like... Like a man was sitting or standing behind me, talking to me. I heard it so clearly. Go online and preach. I said, how? I don't know how. He said, I will help you. Who is the Holy Spirit to us? Our helper. Our comforter. The advocate. Our teacher. Our friend. He used the word, he said, I will help you. Do you understand? I'm coming from the clubs. And you're telling me without training, without school for Bible, I didn't even know scriptures. And I obeyed. Just like Bishop Blessed obeyed and left Nigeria and came to Houston. Now you would think he's making a mistake. One woman, why are you worrying yourself? Worry yourself to come to bring one woman to Christ. Is it that important? Yes, it is. Look at the impact that I'm making right now. Do you see what I'm saying? So I believe that there's one person, I don't know if it's you, 
There's somebody here that God is going to use to make a great impact in this world. Even those that are watching online, it could be you. And it also takes obedience for this to happen. If I had not agreed to go online to preach because I was afraid, or because I'm like, I don't know how to I beg, I don't want to embarrass myself. People will laugh at me. Some of you worry so much about what people think of you. People will be alright. They have their own problems to worry about. They have their own life to worry about. You have to do what you were sent to do. Maybe they will live longer than you. Maybe God gave them 100 years. Maybe God gave you 50 years. So while you are sitting down worried about them, time is running out for you. They got time to fix whatever they need to fix. But you are running out of time. On that day, judgment day, God is not going to say, eh, who are all the people that eh, discourage you? No. It's all a man for himself. Do you understand? You will not be your husband there to come and defend you. Your wife will not come and defend you. Oh, it was my wife that stopped me. <laughs> it was my husband that stopped me. Where is your wife now? Where is your husband? Jesus said, if anyone wants to be his follower, that person must what? Deny himself. Carry their cross daily and follow him. He didn't say carry the cross of the family. Carry the cost of husband and wife. Carry your own cross daily and follow him daily, not once a week, not once a month, not once a year, or not on New Year's Eve. Because some people they only go to church on New Year's Eve. And after the church, happy New Year, they shout out the church. That's where they are going. Club. I know this thing because I used to do parties. New Year's Eve, I was always in the clubs. I wait for people to finish from church and come. Once it's 12, 12, 30, you start seeing a lot of cars coming into the parking lot. Me, I'm sitting there waiting for them to come. They start to buy more words. Hey, Happy New Year, Princess Belenzi. Happy New Year. But this last New Year's Eve, do you know how I spent it? I did a 24 hours Holy Ghost encounter. A lot of you watched it online. We started on the 31st of December. We didn't finish till 24 hours later. You see what we are doing now? It was two days combined for one day. We were all white. I didn't give them food. I didn't give them water. 24 hours. You tell me that's too much? No, it's not. Compared to all the things that I've done when I was in the war. Compared to all the parties that I've done, all the time that I've wasted, 24 hours is nothing. It felt like, is this woman crazy? We are still trying to handle 12 hours. But people were excited to come. No, wait a little bit. People were excited to come. My mother was there. My son. I know I laugh at them that they were sleeping. We were all laughing, but even my son, a 10-year-old, was there for the whole 24 hours. Before, if somebody invites me to a service and it's beyond two hours, I complain. I say, what am I going to be doing that long in that place? When I'm doing parties, my party used to start from 9, 10 till 6 in the morning. Sometimes we party till 8 in the morning. We don't even know it's already daybreak until we come out of the building. If it's a dark hall. But when it comes to the things of God, people worry about time. You go to your job, you work 8 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours. Sometimes you want a big shift. The day you are off, say, if you don't want to stay off. Please, who wants to give up their shift? I need the money. Then you don't remember your body is hurting you. Nothing. But when it comes to the things of God, we some people like to make excuses. Oh, I can't come. I don't have money. I don't do this. If you really wanted to come, you will find a way. 
I'm happy because you guys are not like that. Clap for yourself. A lot of you had to get cancel work to be here. A lot of you have been planning for this. A lot of you, God knows that you use your last money to come here. Because you believe that God will provide. See, let me tell you, life. If we are willing to spend the last that we have for, for God. Do you think he would let you to be stranded? Is he a wicked God? I'm just saying you think he sees that you made so much effort to come. He sees that you even went on three days fasting because you had no money for food. Maybe you, the money you had was enough for hotel. But no money for food. So you say, you know what? I might as well just fast. The last card you have, you gave it as offering. You think that God will let you go back home in tears? Did you see how he located people in Italy? Right before we shared the bridge, I said there's something we have to do. We brought out people that had no transport money to go home. Some people needed as low as five euro. So you guys watched it online. Maybe the devil would have said, eh, hey, now the program is all, so almost over. I told you not to come here now. Let's see how you will go home today. But God had a surprise for them. Some of them, I know some of them would have said, Try. Reality has kicked you know. <laughs> how would I go home now? But God is always thinking of his children. Even the guy that had nothing in his wallet for two days. He came to a program with zero in his wallet. The first day when he was coming, he said he sat in the bus. And the guy that checks the, is it the ticket or whatever you guys have to use to be in the bus, was coming towards him and he said, Father, if it's you that is telling me to come to this program, let this man not ask me for my own. He said, he, he got to everyone, he got to him. The moment he got to him, he stopped and then he turned away. You guys heard it. I gave him the mic to give his testimony. How many of you heard him say it? If you really watch that program, you heard him say it. The man came to his front and it's like suddenly. Hey! He carried empty wallets from far to a program for two days. He was able to find a place to sleep. He was able to find food to eat. Hey, this kind go do. I never see a kind go. This kind go do. Blessed be your holy name. I said, blessed be your holy name. Somebody sing it.
money. Nobody will help you. This woman will come to Italy and leave. And you will not see her. But he was determined. He said, no. I must go. And you guys saw not only did he get delivered. People raised money for him. We took offering for him. Almost 400 euros. The next day when we were even raising money for people. He came out volunteered that he too wanted to give. Jesus from zero in his pocket. To someone that got over 300. And was willing to share 20 or 30 of that with someone. Hey. If he had stayed home and accepted who they have told him he is, who the devil had labeled him to be, would this have happened? Sometimes we ourselves, we, we need to push ourselves. If only we know what we can do, we will stop condemning ourselves. We will stop limiting ourselves. There are sometimes, you know, you can do something and the devil will say you can't do it. Well, you can do all things through Christ Jesus. He gives us strength to do anything we set our mind to do. God will not just look at you and say, well, you're going to embarrass yourself. What made you think you can go to my program without money? No. God will see that I am tired of this situation, Father. You brought this woman here because of me. If it takes me walking there, I will walk there. Amen. And lo and behold, he came and gave a testimony. I love you guys for coming out. I see a lot more people coming. I know Italy program was a boost for some of you because some of these stories inspired you when you were watching. Some of you were probably in that guy's situation. Or you're still probably in his shoes. But the same God that changed his story, that same God will change your story. I don't care what anyone would have, would have said about you. I don't care how they have labeled you. I don't care what they have said about your family. Maybe nobody in your family succeeds or nobody in your family gets married or nobody in your family get graduates or nobody in your family has come up to something. I don't care. I say today, all those labeling will be taken off. In the name of Jesus. Every curse I break in the name of Jesus. Every curse affecting you and your family. I say I break it in the name of Jesus. That's right, somebody hold on. Please. She just got up to say amen. It's like power just came on her. There's so much power in this place. I want to read a scripture. I was meditating on some scriptures while I was on the plane yesterday coming from Italy to Germany. God led me to read the book of John. John chapter 1. Please, if you have kids that want to play, I hear kids. I don't focus with children's noise. Can you take them to that inner room and close that door, please? Ushers, they are distracting me. I don't like the noise. I hear from this corner, I hear from this corner, and I see a kid running around playing. This is a church. When you take them into that room, you close the door. Thank you, guys. Hallelujah. It's like one child will cry, it will activate the other cry. The other child will cry again. <laughs> it is well. I just need your attention. You came here so your life will change, right? Yes. I did not fly here for nothing to happen. From Italy, you've already seen that things happen. And that was not even a lot of people. And most of my programs, I don't even announce it too long. That was probably a three-week program. I don't spend two months, three months promoting stuff. It could be two weeks, one week. Sometimes I've done programs in less than one week. And people still show up. Do you see what I'm saying? I go as I am led by the Spirit. And the same Spirit that led me to come here is the same one that led you to come. Yeah. And it's the same Spirit that will touch your life today. Yeah. Because I obeyed and I came, and you obeyed and you came, See, God loves you when we obey because obedience is better than what? You obey and you came. Because of that, God will do his part. And those of you watching online, you are not excluded. 
You are watching, you are sharing, you are inviting others to watch. You are not excluded. You too, your story will change. In the name of Jesus. I cannot forget the online audience. So while I was reading this scripture, something like something happened to me. I said I must share this with you guys today. I need your attention. I don't want anybody talking. I'm hearing too much noise. Even the ushers, when you are talking, make your voice low. Please, if the ushers sit you, obey their sitting. But if they don't obey, leave them. Just do something else. I'm hearing your voice. I, I shouldn't be hearing you. When you're talking to the crowd, you talk slowly or quietly. Close that door when you put the kids, please. I have to focus. Help me here. I don't like noise. I don't work well with noise. It's distracting. Thank you, Jesus. Can you bring out the volume a little bit? Don't you want to be blessed? Yes. So make the woman of God happy. She doesn't work well with noise. It irritates my spirit. You know, I'm trying to be nice, but it really helps me if you can help. If you can help me lower the noise. So I was reading John chapter 1, and then when I got to verse 43, pay attention to the story, okay? John chapter 1 from verse 43. I know somebody online is probably posting the scriptures. God bless all of you that are always posting scriptures. It is well with you. You will never lack in the name of Jesus. That's the prayer I heard for you. Those that are currently posting scriptures, I know everybody will start posting now. <laughs> I heard they will never lack. Thank you, Jesus. Can you guys hear me online? Let me even ask. Is the background music too loud or can you hear me? I need to know before I say this. Because this is an important message. Thank you, Jesus. Sorry, you guys know why I sit because it's not easy to do 36 hours standing. And Pastor and his family got me a very comfortable seat. Look at the seat. The thing on the seat is from my dress. Come on, clap for Pastor again. It's so comfortable. This sitting part, the leather is different. There are some that you guys have gotten for me in other programs. When I sat down after a while, my listing was paying me small small. But this one is well padded. Thank you, Pastor. Okay, they say they can hear me. Good. God bless all of you. Good. I love my on on online audience. Make sure you share. Even here, if you have not shared, share it. Somebody will be blessed. The good thing about these videos is not just you that is here that gets blessed. Even those watching online. When I say receive it, if they tap into it, they do receive. Even in Italy, a lot of people online received the gift of tongues. They were speaking in tongues. Just watching online, a lot of them were removing things from their body when I was doing deliverance there. So, I'm an online ministry. This is where my ministry is. So, whenever I do program, I make sure I take care of them as well. I make sure they can hear. Hallelujah. They say they can hear very well. It's clear. Hallelujah. Come on, clap for Jesus. Do you know how hard it is for me to be doing a program in different different places and some places that maybe I'll have problem with sound, some places I'll have problem with internet. Here, there is no problem. Internet and sound, perfect. I bet give Jesus a big round. The pastor was even telling me, he said, woman of God, if the seats fill up, we have more. I said, I don't know. I know I have people in Germany, but they are all scattered everywhere. He said, woman of God, the calls that we've been getting. I don't even know how you got it. When I did the flyer, I put Ruth's number on the flyer. Some of you called the flyer number to a point. You had to look for the pastor's phone number. Yeah. That's how this place, some people were to come to this place. I think Ruth was with us in Italy at the program. Maybe during that three days or 12 hours that she came. You guys, because she was not answering, you say, oh yeah, we have to find another person. <laughs> Pastor started getting phone calls. His number was not listed anywhere, but some of you can do FBI and CIA and research. <laughs> Even me, I don't know the pastor's number. <laughs> they started calling Pastor. And this man of God is so wonderful. 
He picked people up from the train station. He booked hotels, help people book hotels. He didn't have to do that. He just gave me his space to use. But my followers were calling him. And he 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 did. He helped them. Who does that? He's a busy man. Even yesterday while I was here doing practice or doing what I was doing. He kept going out and coming in. People were calling him somewhere, arriving, he would describe places to them. And his number is not even on the flyer. He's not one of my workers. He's a man of God that has already done enough by giving me his church. Instead of me spending thousands. In India, I spent almost 5,600 for that venue for three days. Just that venue. Three days. Here, I have not spent nothing. I've not seen this kind of thing before. You don't understand. His son is keyboardist, everything. He brought all these people to play for me. He went to get this chair by himself. This is not a chair from his church. Him and his son went around looking for this chair to make me comfortable. I said, Pastor, I would have used one of your chairs. He said, no, I know what you like. Hey! You guys are not, this is, this is exciting, the spirit inside of me. I don't know, anytime I talk about it, I'm like wondering. No wonder when I even showed my bishop his picture and his church. Bishop was like, he's good, go, use it. Like he could feel his spirit. He connected with the spirit of the man of God. I, he's not faking. My bishop can look at somebody and say, this one will cause trouble. This one. He didn't get that vibe. He said he's good. He put me once I saw the video. My spirit accepted him. I haven't seen people now. He's walking around calling people. People are calling him. Pastor, I'm talking about you. I can't stop talking about you. Thank you so much, sir. You have made my... I feel like this is my church. Yeah. He himself, he doesn't sit here on the stage. So people will not allow you to sit. He understands why he sits. He said, I understand the work you do. It's not easy. Not a lot of people can do your work. 12 hours, 3 days. It, one day he was telling me... He, after the ETP program, he said, oh, man, I got, if it was me that did that ETP program, I would take one month break. <laughs> for those three days of 12, 12 hours, I will be resting for one month. I don't know how you do it. It's tiring. And if you read about Jesus, if you're someone that's always reading about Jesus, you will see that Jesus sat a lot. Because he was doing this almost every day. And he does long hours. So it's only wise for you to know how to conserve energy. You saw me standing a little bit, sitting a little bit. Some people, they don't want to know why you are sitting. All they will say, first of all, they will say a woman cannot be preaching. Secondly, they will say, why are you sitting? They don't, and if you give them that job to do it, they can't. So a man of God that understands why I do what I do, he see results, he see testimonies. He see life change. And he said, you always talk about salvation. You always lead people to Jesus. And I really like that. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether you sat or you stood. People are getting saved. People are getting healed. People's destinies are being restored. He also does deliverance a lot. So he knows what it is. He think it's easy to do deliverance. There are some people that you lay hand on, you have carrying problem. They will not come to your church and go, they will not watch you again, but you, you have entered a case that you shouldn't have entered. All the demons fighting them, the shrine fighting them, it is you and your family that they will start to fight. So that person has gone their way, but you, the devil does not forget things, so <laughs> the devil does not forgive. <laughs> You would think that that deliverance is done. People are clapping for Jesus, everything. <laughs> First of all, you start attacking your finances. Your children will start getting sick. Things will begin to... 
for one person that you just prayed for. If only you guys know what pastors go through for you. You will never talk bad about a man of God. You will never talk bad about him. In fact, you will go on your knees daily praying for them. Praying for strength. Whether they are sick or not, like pastor here, he said he had not been able to travel for a long time because of church. He can't go anywhere. He has to be in church to preach. Don't you get it? Even if the weather is so bad, some people are canceling. He's going to be here. Because there are some that will not cancel. When they come, you say church is closed. What kind of pastor is that? A closed church. He will risk the flood or whatever it is. Drive his car in that condition and come here. Even if he's not feeling well. Because sometimes we do it. We probably have pain somewhere. He will use that pain and come and preach. And you will not even know he's dealing with pain. Even if he can't pay his bills. Maybe the church rent. He's not going to come to you and burden you with it. He will pray that God will touch your heart. But he has to deal with that. And still give you a good message. That will uplift you. That will bless you. That you can go your week. Like go along with your week or something. But he too, he needs some uplifting right now. He needs some encouragement. He needs somebody to pray for him. Clap for all the pastors out there. All the men of God. All the servants of God. The women of God. That are steadfast. That are doing this work. And people don't know the struggles they go through. That's why you have to be careful what you say about men of God. You may think nothing happened for what that comment you made or that thing you did. But wait for it. God doesn't like that. Because only him knows the sacrifice. Only him knows what we go through. Me, last night I couldn't even sleep. I was up till 6. Struggling to sleep. The room was not even cold. It was high. The AC, I turned it on waiting for it to come on. I said, okay, I guess it doesn't come on. I forced myself to sleep. It wasn't hot outside, but me, I'm someone that is used to fun and AC. I suffered in Italy already. Now I'm here in Germany. So today I'm begging that they should give me a fan. In less than three hours, I was up and I'm here. After entering three different planes to come here. Short, short flight. I don't know why they have to do me stop and stop anyhow. Because those short one, one half flight, before you close your eyes and sleep. You're already there. You can't even dream good dream because why are you in the midst of a dream? The pilot is announcing something or something. And I'm here preaching for 12 hours, praying for people doing this. When I go back, I may not even be able to eat. I'm fasting. Even if I eat, it has to be small because if I eat too heavy, it may be hard for me to sleep. Three days I must complete. Even if a pain starts now, I must complete. All you know is, woman of God, I came from far. I must receive. <laughs> it's the truth. So always celebrate men of God. Honor them. Bless them. Pray for them. If you are led to sow into their life, don't hesitate to do it. The Bible says that if you even give a prophet just what? A cup of water. You will get a prophet's reward. Just as little as water. Meaning, if you are kind to a prophet in any way, you help them in any way, God will give you their reward. He will reward you, not ordinary reward, for the fact that you taught of his servant. And you help. Because a lot of people just take from them. Some men of God, after praying for you, they will still give you money. Some men of God, if you ask them, they are paying rent for one or two members in the church. They are giving transport money to members. They are picking them up from somewhere. They are helping them. And sometimes people don't have friends or family. It's pastor, they always call. Pastor, please, I need your help. Even at 2 a.m. in the night, there are some members that they have no one but pastor to call. Pastor that is about to sleep will get up, start running there. Jesus Christ. Clap for them again. I don't know why I am just in the mood to appreciate pastors. But sometimes, unless you have been there, 
you will not really understand how it feels. I am currently there. This program that I'm doing, I know how much I have spent so far to bring it to people to be free. Now me, God has blessed me. I am not struggling financially. Because I have a lot of followers that are givers. They're always giving their offering, their seed, their time. And that is making sure that I have meat in the storehouse. Isn't that what the Bible says? Bring your tithes offering. Eh? So that there will be meat in the storehouse. Meat means there will be funds to cover the expenses, to take care of the traveling, the, the halls. I see that small venue in Italy cost me 5,600 euros for three days. So imagine what pastor is paying monthly for his rent. Sometimes the offering may not even be enough. I'm just saying. Even my bishop, his church is probably as big as this. And now he extended it. He pays about 6000 a month. I was even asking pastor. I said, pastor, how much is this place? Like me, when I see a church, I don't just see, oh, people are many. I try to see the running aspect of it. How are they faring? Do you understand? Before, I would probably not think of that. But now I am there. I know that ministry is not cheap. Ministry, not only do you spend your hours, money. Some pastors have to have other jobs. If not, church will be closed. Sometimes their own family, there was one of my followers, Patricia. She's always sowing into the ministry, into my bishop's ministry, into any anywhere she's led. She said, woman of God, my father was a pastor. Even at night, 2 a.m., they would knock on his door. She's from Cameroon. My father would get up, follow them. My father never asked for offering. My father just prays for people. And some of these people are not even thinking to give. She said, sometimes women of God will have white rice, but we don't have stew. We suffered. But my father said, don't worry, God will provide. My father eventually died. And I told God, I said, I must make sure that I sow into ministries, into the work of God. So sometimes when she's giving, all she thinks is, is, is what she went through growing up as a pastor's child. Do you see what I'm saying? She said, when she said that part, she's probably watching online right now. So sometimes we'll have white rice, we don't have stew. But if at that point they're eating that, if you call her father, or if you come, he will leave that day wrong and help you. That when she sees pastors, she sees the pain that people don't see. I said, God will bless you. She said she wants to be a kingdom, what's that thing called? Fi financier or something. Because she knows what they went through. Now me, I don't normally just talk about things unless the spirit of God is leading me to talk about it. And God has a way of celebrating his own. What this man of God has done for me, it deserves celebration. You've seen him getting up. <laughs> you think 12 hours is easy. If somebody's coming to your church to do for two hours, three hours, quick, quick, you open the door, you knock it out. I'm taking the whole day. And the whole family are involved. Look at his son holding that camera now. If I need keyboard now, he will switch to keyboard and play for me. His daughter is coming. She's in school. She will also help and sing. His wife has been the one running around organizing for food. So it's like their whole life is on standstill for me for three days. So that's why God is making me say these things. To appreciate every man of God out there. Keep going. God will provide for you. You will never lack financially in the name of Jesus. Because the devil tries to cripple finances in church so that the pastor will close down. But God that called you will come through for you in the name of Jesus. If you are a member of any church here and you always fall for the devil's tricks, stop giving him your tithe. Stop sowing seed. Pastor is already comfortable. He doesn't need your money. Rebuke that voice. Sow seeds. It's better to sow seed in the church 
than for you to go and use it to play one game that is not going to benefit you in any way. Or buy clothes that you know you're not going to wear for the next. Some of you have clothes in your closet. You bought it, but you've not even worn it. The label is still on it. That money would have been more profitable if it was given to the church. I'm always sowing seed, especially with my bishop. The other day he wanted to expand his church so that he can have children's um, department. God told me on Valentine's Day this year, if you watch me, pay one year of that rent. Total was like $30,000. I paid one year and guess what? After I paid one year, a month later, I got my own office, my own studio. After two years of preaching, I didn't have my own office. And guess what? My own office and studio was paid for for one year. $98,000. God provided the money for me to pay my own because I sold it to another man of God's ministry and he blessed me. Because I, I, I helped with their ministry expanding, God expanded mine. Don't you see what I'm saying? It's never in vain. Become a giver, especially to the to the things of God, in the things of God. Don't listen to those people saying, pastors want your money. The money is for people to come and be blessed. Don't be, these are the tricks of the enemy. Rebuke that voice. You that is watching online, rebuke it. If only you know, you will not start saying that again. No one that you are running away from the God. God is calling you. You are being running. Why are you running? I said the call and become one of us. <laughs> and then you will know. I see some of you here sitting. I hear evangelists. I hear pastors. Some of you here are going to be one of us soon. I pray that God will give you the grace to do this. The strength and the power. So you don't quit. Because sometimes it could be difficult. Some members can really try to frustrate you. But you have to keep pushing. Some can come just to scatter what God is using you to build. You still have to show them love. You still have to use wisdom. It is well. On that side, there are too many kids crying. Oshas, don't just stand when you hear them crying. Do your job. I mean, Usher, they just wanted to wear t shirt. <laughs> is it just to wear t shirt? No, you must work. Oh, now you know how it is. Look at my head, Usher. Elena, the one holding the camera. Somebody clap for this beautiful lady. She's my head, Usher, in my programs in America. And God led me to bring her with me because my girls couldn't come with me, the ones that work with me. And because of how video things go, she ended up becoming the video lady. You think it's easy to stand here and hold phone for 12 hours? <laughs> Let me tell you what happened to me in Dubai. The video guy was very bad on the first day. Very bad. So I started using my phone. I gave one of the, the girl that was assisting me to use the phone and record. And the way she was, because I always monitor it with another phone. The way she was recording is like she was cutting off people's head. You know, the video was not really good. Like, I always monitor what she's doing to make sure it's good. So I got angry. I took the phone from her. I said, you don't have to video. Give it to me. So people were coming to me. Woman of God, we can help. I said, no. Because I was already upset because the internet was acting up. And you guys remember day one of Dubai. It wasn't very clear. So I carried the phone no. Bishop was talking. I was videoing Bishop. Two, three minutes. My hands are to pin me up. <laughs> it was pinning me seriously. I said, Father, what have I started? <laughs> Father, you have to free me from this place. So. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Up. So, and I was running face doing it. Doing, doing like I can do it, you know. 
like a professional, but my heart, and because I have rejected everybody from helping me, I could not say, you come and help me. Until suddenly the internet was disconnected. And I come and I said, see the kind of internet you guys gave me, what is this? I now went outside and said, yeah, thank you, Father. <laughs> thank you, Jesus, for saving my life. <laughs> this thing is not easy. It's good to appreciate this people. <laughs> is this how hard this thing is? <laughs> so I now went into the restroom to recover from all the pain that I received. So by the time I came back, they had fixed internet and one guy from the audience had volunteered to do it. I said, who told him to do it? Did you guys ask me? He said, woman of God. I said, don't worry, just do it, just do it. <laughs> they had no idea. <laughs> See, they are very truthful. Make this thing, let us tell the truth. Appreciate, even this usher that are standing there. You think it's easy to start? Even the children that are crying, it is easy to cry. <laughs> Everyone has a role to play. Don't say, like, ha. Huh. Look at her hand. It's like she's not the one holding the phone. That's how it is for me. For those of you that don't know me, that I do 12 hours program on Facebook, 18 hours, I hold my phone like this to preach. Every time you see me online, it's like this. People that bought me stand thinking I don't have money for stand, I don't use it. It's like, it's not even my hand. Sometimes I don't feel anything until when I'm done with the video. You've always watched me. It's always like this. That's how I stay. So I know exactly. See, when God wants you to do something, he helps you with it. He strengthens you. He gives you the kind of strength that an ordinary person come and pick up this phone and they'll say, ah, my hand is bleeding you. But she, for all you know, an angel is assisting her now. Holding it. So I appreciate people. I don't look down on anyone. Because all of us, all our little, little effort makes the program a success. So all of you that are working here, clap for yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have to experience it to know what I'm saying. So I wanted to read this scripture. Of John 1 from verse 43. I'll read King James and then I'll be translated to others. He said, the day following, Jesus will go forth into Galilee and find that P uh, Philip and said unto him, follow me. So Jesus went to Galilee. He found Philip and he said, follow me. Now Philip, now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip find that Nathaniel and said unto him, we have found him. Come, we have found the Messiah. Of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. Somebody is saying, We have found him, O oh, the Messiah, the one that the prophets were speaking of. We have found that chosen one, the one that God will use mightily. Can any good thing come out from that girl? Can any good thing come out from you? That family. Some people, some of you here, your family have been through so much that people don't believe any good thing can come out of your family. When they hear that it's one of you doing something big, they're like, Shh. that family, that one. I beg, let us hear something else. How many of you understand what I'm saying? It's like you don't believe any good news can come out from your family. That's how bad it looks. Your story, you don't want to hear it. Because it's not one of those families that are shining or that are being known for something. Yours is just a quiet family that even women cannot get married. Or nobody is having children. Or no marriage is working. Or people are dying every month. So there's a comment they make when they hear about you and they find out where you're from. They're like, I beg. I'm telling you that that thing will change today. Yeah. That comment, that labeling, that they've been labeling you and your family. 
It's about to change today. He said, but Nathaniel said to Philip, I'm reading the ERV translation, Nazareth, can any good thing come from Nazareth? Hmm. Nazareth, I beg. <laughs> Tell me something else. What good can come out? You see the place Jesus came from? A poor background. People were probably expecting him to come from like a royal family. You understand? He came from probably one of the poorest family in town. And I'm talking about Jesus. So you that is thinking that why is it my family that is so poor? Why is it my family that is so broke? Why is it that we, we are the ones not succeeding? I am telling you that Jesus Christ, hey, they could not even find a room the day they had Jesus. He was not giving birth to in a very comfortable hospital bed or anything, no. Where was he put in? A manger. The son of God. His father, carpenter. He too, I'm sure he let carpentry work. And people will bring table. Can you fix this table? The leg has broken. Sure, bring it. Do you understand what I am saying? Who would believe that this one is the one that has come to save us? Who would believe that this one is the one that can cast out devils, that can do this? All they see is a carpenter. Maybe he didn't even have good clothes. Maybe every time they make money from the walk, straight to paying whatever they need to pay. He was not the only one. He had siblings. Do you see where I'm coming from? That some of you, your life right now, is making you even question. Can God change my story? Can God do something about my life? Why did I not come from a family like that one? They are comfortable. They all have cars in their family. Our house, not one person has a car. Nobody in this family has ever bought a car. Nobody has ever graduated in this family. All of us are suffering. Are you hearing about Jesus? There was a time I could not pay bills. I was so broke. Very broke. My son would come to me and say, Mommy, I need money for, for food in school, cafeteria lunch, $20 or $19. I did not have it. At 30 something years old, I was living in my parents' house with my son, eating their food. My son was eating their food, and I could not contribute. care of your parents not to be a burden to them although my parents never complain but you yourself you start to feel a certain way shy father I cannot do well again I have to move back into the family house at this age going to 40 hey this is a big call so and then you are the first child four others behind you you guys can relate to what I'm talking about. Single parent. The father is not helping. It's enough that you're already feeding for free, eating for free. Would you not start asking your parents for money? Please, give me money. Can't you see that they need help? So imagine Jesus. Probably the only income he ever saw was whenever he helped his father fix a table. Do you understand? Carpenter now, they will bring and somebody 
customers may have been rude. I told you to nail it like this. Now, why did you nail it like this? This is not the chairs I wanted. Jesus. I'm talking about Jesus. Picture this background. Poor. Poor. So did this guy say, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? They have said that about you. But you are about to surprise them. Yeah. Yeah. Your life is about to change. Yeah. Your story is about to be rewritten. Yeah. There's a guy that sang a song that came out giving a testimony. In Italy, I don't know if you guys heard it. I, I can see the finger of God rewriting my story. Oh, I love that song. He said he was jobless, didn't have his papers. And he sent me a prayer request all the way from Italy, me in America. Send me a prayer request. One of God, please, I need job, I need visa. All I said is receive your document, receive your job. In the name of Jesus. I typed it. He said, Amen. He said, that same day, he got a job and he got his five years document. Yeah. He gave that testimony in Italy program a few days ago. He came. You guys saw it. I've never seen him. I don't know him. But his story was rewritten Amen. in one day.
Please shut up. What kind of language are you speaking? Made fun of me. Some of them are now coming to me. Woman of God, please, I have a prayer request. If I had stopped because of their comments, who will be praying for them now? People will always talk. People will always be there to fight you. But you, you must not let them get to you. You are somebody. Amen. You are somebody. Amen. Not just an ordinary somebody. Somebody great. Yes. Jesus knew who he was. He was just waiting for his time. He didn't see him announce and say, come on now. I am the son of God. Do you know what I came here for? Please keep your carpentry. No. He lived like a regular person. Suffered like a regular person. Was tempted like a regular person. Like one of us. Took insults. Like a regular person. But all this while, he knew who he was. He knew when the time comes, he will do what he came for. And he will leave. He won't sit down in one place, be crying and saying, oh, what kind of life is this? What kind of this is that? That doesn't do anything for anyone. Some of you came here on behalf of your family. Because you're sick and tired of, of all the labor, of all the suffering. No, it's like dead chains. And you say, you know what? I must come here to represent my family. Because something good must come out of this family. Yes. Somebody will get married in this family. Yes. Somebody will graduate. Yes. Somebody will become a millionaire in this family. Yes. Somebody's story will change. Yes. Some of you, all your family members are out of country, living in other countries, but they are all suffering. People outside, the, like in Africa, would think, oh, they are, their family is good, or they are all in abroad, and we are abroad. Not knowing that they are abroad, that they are in. It's like slavery. They are just not in the country. But if only you know what, in fact, they are even living worse. It's even better for them to come home. But shame would not let, if I want to shame, they don't even have the transport money. To buy flight tickets to go back home. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? You came to the right place. God has given me the power to tread on serpents and scorpions, to tread on all those voodoo priests. All those evil uncles and evil aunties, all those evil friends, all those people that put you in that cage, that put your family in that bondage, to destroy all their works. Is it not in charge by enemies? And not only would you be free, your family. On the last day, God told me, tell them to line up when you share the grace and tell you what they need me to do. All I want you to say is, receive it. It is done. She was there. She was there. I closed at eight instead of nine. They stood in a long line. It took me two hours. One, one minute per person. They would tell me. I will say, it is done. Receive it. One lady came out and her prayer request was her brothers and sisters nothing is working for them or their husbands or their wives. Please, she wants God to free them. The next day her sister's husband that had not gotten a job for years got a job. Yeah. I put 
posted it on Facebook. I'm not talking about two days from that time. I said, receive it. It is done. Man that had not been able to work. She's here somewhere in Germany, right? Before she landed in Germany, she already got a phone call. My husband just got a job. It may not be a big deal to you, but for someone that has not been able to work for a long time, that's a big deal. Not knowing somebody came and stood for the family. Somebody said, I don't need anything. I just need my family to be free. So that all this legal can be taken off. So when I was reading this, God was speaking to me about the scripture. Can any good thing come? Even me, they said it, but look at me now. My bishop is so proud of me. He's happy that he obeyed God and came to America. He's always watching me. He sometimes he follows me to my programs. He says some of the things that I do amazes him. Because this is someone that when he saw her, he saw her as a club girl wearing mini skirt that. But God showed him a different picture of me. I preached a message the other day. I said there was one day God showed me a lady that had like a black mini skirt and a red top with some braids. Like a prostitute. Very short skirt. If you bend that you will see everything. And then God said this is how the world see her. This is what the devil has turned her into. But this is how I see her. She had a longer skirt, the same color black, and a red jacket, and a hat like somebody in church. And she was holding microphone, singing or something in church, or preaching. But she was doing something in the church, like maybe a pastor's wife or... He said, this is the picture that I look at. So when God sent him to come get me, he was not interested in that picture that the world had seen of me. He was interested in the picture of the evangelist. The one that you are seeing now. So I don't care what picture that you look like right now. The picture that I'm seeing of you is the picture that God has of you. I see greatness. What does that mean? I came here to bring you out of that place so you can fulfill your purpose. It's amazing how God gives me messages. That's why you have to keep studying your Bible. Some of you will say God doesn't speak to you. He's speaking to you is in his word. You could be reading Bible thinking you're wasting time, but he has a word in that place for you. And once he opens your understanding or gives you understanding of that word, it's like you're so excited. You're like, oh my God, this is for me. Thank you, Jesus. It's like healing has taken place immediately. Have you ever read the Bible jumping and ex like you know you understand? Sometimes I will be shouting, Hey Lord, you'll be wondering what is it? I say, Oh my god, and I've read that scripture before. But that particular day it was the word for me. And there's a way the Holy Spirit will explain it to me. It will just fit that situation, that current situation. Read your Bible, don't just be a tongue speaking believer. That is running away from the word of God. There are so many stories in the Bible that you can relate to. There are people in the Bible that have been through worse. Like the story of Job. Do you know how he lost everything? Even his children died. All of them happened in one day. Sometimes I ask people, the situation you're going through is as bad as that of Job. And Job was not even a sinful man. He was a just man. The NLT version, God called him a man of integrity, blameless. And he went through all that, lost all his business, his children all died in one day. But he still did not curse God. Stories like that, if the devil is trying to tell you to say something that you will regret to God, when you read such stories, you are encouraged, you're like, ah, this man so far, oh, my own no bad like this. All I did, I just lost my job. 
But I see my children. I see her food in the fridge. Do you see what I'm saying? But if you don't read it, how would you know to be encouraged? You'll be calling friends, complaining about your life. When there's the Bible there for you. At the end, if you read the last chapter, he was restored. He got double of everything he lost. So read your Bible. That's God speaking. Sometimes if you don't know what to read, you say, Father, give me a scripture to read. Where do you want me to study today? Suddenly, it's either going to come to you or you will just open your Bible thinking you are opening randomly, but you're not the one doing it. You will learn at the very story that you need for that day. If you even close your eyes and open, <laughs> it happens to me all the time. Sometimes you need encouragement. Go to the word of God. You will be encouraged. Some people may not understand where you are coming from. Some people even feel like you are bothering them, always calling, complaining to them. They may not tell you right there. But when you hang up, they are like, this girl is always calling me. Telling me a problem. Who would like them a whole problem? You don't know? You think everybody is happy when you call them all the time? But God never complains. He, in fact, if you could spend the whole day with him, he's okay with it. Can any good thing come out of what's your family name? Everybody say something. Can any good thing come out of what say your family name? Well, you know what I'm saying because it's already been said about your family. This is not liberation for you only. It's liberation for the whole family. Yeah. And after today, some of you will come here with testimonies from today. Yeah. On Sunday, you will come here with testimonies from today. Yeah. Some of you, it's probably healing that your family need because everybody in your family has one sickness or the other. Did that anybody dies of a particular sickness, maybe cancer or something or something? I say today every curse will be broken. Yeah. Your story will change, your address will change. Yeah. Do you know what address changing means? Because where you currently stay, you don't even like it, you are just managing it. But where God will take you to will be comfortable. If you are in a country where you are not even happy you see yourself in America or another country but you are here because you can't even you, you don't even have documents yet you can't even do anything so your address will change too. Yeah. and some of you cannot do anything because maybe you are not the one sick but everybody back home is always calling you for money for medicine or for something so you are not sick but you are the one suffering it because you are the one sending money all the time when they are healed, what would you be sending money for? In Jesus' name. Every name in Jesus' name. Every name I say in Jesus' name, Lord. Every name must bow. Must bow. Every name must bow. I say every name must bow.
something. Yes. Are you not excited already? Yes. Are you not ready? Yes. Are you enjoying this message? Yes. Am I speaking to somebody here? Yes. Some of you at your age you're supposed to have accomplished so much. But you are still in the same place. You are even worse than you were five years ago. According to the plan that you had for your life, by now, you should have been here. But you're not even here, you are here. Do not let me go. No drop, just to keep on. The same way I came. Touch me with your hand. Only the keyboard. Jesus. I say I don't want to go. The same way I came. Touch me with your hand.
poor. What can anyone in this family do? They say that about being God. But look at what he became. Look at what happened later. The same way that I could.
so that your light will shine, so that he will surround you with fire and you will become untouchable. Because if you pray and you don't repent, that thing will come back and fight you again because you have no protection. But if you surrender to God, they cannot touch you because Jesus is waiting for them. Look at me. Since God changed my life, I can comfortably travel anywhere, cast out demons, do whatever. I am not afraid because I have Jesus right here. I live to please him. See, that's the trick here. If I was living to displease him, living in sin, the devil can play soccer with me. He can do whatever he wants. But I live for God. So God takes my case seriously. I don't know where you've been to, but see, if you are not born again, if you are not saved, you are wasting your time. One of the prayers you need to pray for your family is salvation. They should be saved because some of them go to voodoo priests for help. And that adds more to the problem that is already at hand. Some of them believe in traditional way. And those bring other spirits that put you in another cage. So when you repent here, you will also pray for, for God to touch their hearts too, so they too can repent. So that the whole family can get love God. So that nobody will open a door that will invite what will come and be fighting the whole family again. This thing that I'm telling you is a very serious issue. Because while you are here trying to help, to help them, they are also still doing things to cause more trouble. When you visit the voodoo priest, you live there with demons following you. Even the thing they give you has so much demons in it. So instead of getting relief, you are in more bondage. If you are here and you are ready to surrender totally to God, I need you to come to the front. This is very important. Most of the things that I've said, It applies to a lot of you. Just because you speak in tongues and you pray doesn't mean your relationship with God is right. You have been so desperate that you have gone to some places that you're not even proud of right now. Go back home the same way that I can touch me with your hand. I'm sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Jesus, for every wrong that I have done, every sin that I have committed. Begin to tell him sorry. Ask for forgiveness. Our Father is so merciful. Even those that are watching online, begin to ask for mercy. All of you here too. Mean what you are saying. Pray from your heart. Are you not tired of, of being labeled as that person that they are saying, can any good thing come out from this one? Can any good thing come out of this? Touch me with your head. I need my life to change, Lord. I need my family life to change, Lord. It's okay to cry. I see some of you are crying. Look at how I'm crying. Cry if you have to cry to your father. Father, I have suffered so much. I am sorry I went to some of these places. I didn't mean to. I was just so desperate, Lord. I did not mean to, Father. I was just wondering why so much suffering in my life. So much suffering in my family. I was just trying to see what I'm doing will help. But it didn't help. You are the only one that can change my story. You are the only one that can break every curse. You are the only one that can liberate my family. Oh, I don't want to go back home. 
I confess all my sins. Please forgive me. I didn't know any better. I promise not to go back to my old ways. I believe that Jesus Christ came and died for me. On the cross of Calvary. So that my sins can be wiped away. I accept Jesus Christ. As my Lord and personal Savior. Be the Lord over my life. I promise to serve you forever and ever. In the name of Jesus. Somebody, ushers hold them. I don't know. The power of God is coming on them so strong. You are saved. Somebody, ushers hold them over there. Where are the ushers? Do we have enough? Hold them, hold them, hold them. They say, where I came. I need your touch, Lord. 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 Oh, I did it. You have made peace with God. This is the first step. This is the first step. Touch me with your hand. Jesus. It is well. Now peace. Be still. You over there. Be still. Be still. Don't cause distraction for me. Raise up your hand, everybody. There is a big celebration happening in heaven right now. Because you were lost before, but did you know that you have just been found? Now you have Jesus ready to fight for you. Ready to break every curse. Ready to free you and your family. Raise up your hand. Leave that lady on the floor. I want the ushers to be a part of this prayer. Or take her to the back somewhere. She's not going to cause distraction for us. Take her to the back. Quick, quick, quick. I need ushers to raise up their hand too. Take her all the way to the back. pray for you. Even those that are watching online, close your eyes. God has given me the power to change your story. I cannot take the credit for this because I don't have any power of my own. I break every curse. Affecting everybody here. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every ancestral cause. Somebody. There's so many demons in this place. Manifesting. Too much manifestations. Are you guys seeing that? I'm trying to make sure everybody partake in it. I guess I'll pray for the ushers separately. Just do your job. You demon. That has been tormenting this family for a long time. Holy Ghost, fire all over your body. Raise up your hand, all of you. Fire. Fire, 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 fire. 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 Fire from your head to your toe. You witch that have been sitting on their destinies. I say fire. You that has caged their family. Fire. Fire. Hey, they will be free today. You that have made them rebuild this family. Say, can any good thing come out of this one? Fire on you. I am using you as a point of contact to free people in your family. Every member of your family. Before the end of this program, testimonies will come forth. Not just from you. All 
chanson from your family. Don't say anything now. Just raise up your hand. Out of them. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ancestral spirit. Come on. Monetary spirit. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Look at that. Come on. Come on. Come on. Look at that. Look at that. It's too much. 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 These are the demons that are holding them back. The demons that are blocking their family. Even your family, wherever they are. Even those watching online. I say, come out, you demons. In the name of Jesus. Free them now. Begin to give them everything you have stolen from them. Restore everything you have taken from their family. Look at that one. Restore everything you have taken from their family. Now remove everything you put on their face. On their head. Remove, 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 remove. That pot that you buried, that child that you buried in their in their compound, in their house, in their business, bring it out, dig 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 it all out. In the name of Jesus, hold that, hold that, hold that. Dig it all out. Bring it out. Whatever you put in them, I want them to fuck off it out, vomit it, yawn it out. Everything they put in you, begin to yawn, begin to yawn, begin to yawn, begin to yawn. Cough it out, vomit it out, out of your system. That monetary device that they put in you, no matter which country you go to, show them, show them, show them, show them. Come stand up here, stand up here, show them. That monetary device that they have used to monitor you, that they have used to monitor you. Come out, come out of their system, come out of their system, come out, come out. That monitoring device. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Every monitoring spirit that they use to follow you everywhere you go. Fire on them, fire. Some of them are outside waiting for you to come out. Fire on those monitoring spirits. Fire, fire. Come back to the side. Fire. More fire. That demon that is waiting for you to come out so it will enter you. I send it back to hell right now where it belongs in the name of Jesus. I said fire into your house. Uh -huh, that one is removing something from her face. Look at that one. Removing something from her face. Look at that one. Removing something from her face. I said fire into your house. Your hotel room. Fire everywhere. For everything that belongs to you. Fire, 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 fire. As you're receiving your deliverance, your family, wherever they are, they are also receiving their deliverance. I free you, I free your children from every curse, everything that has put you in a poverty situation, in a pathetic situation. From today, God is rewriting your story. Everything that belongs to you is being restored back to you. In the name of Jesus, I've broken every curse. I've restored all destinies. In the name of Jesus. Every key that was taken from you, take it back. Your jobs, take it back. Your finances, take it back. Long life, take it back. Your health, take it back. Every sickness in your body, I command it to go. In your family body, I command it to go. Even those that are watching online, sickness, be God. Pain, be God. In the name of Jesus. Whatever belongs to you, I command them to come back to you now. Amen. Whoever owes you, they will be restless until they pay you. Amen. Whatever they took from you, they will be restless until they give it back. Amen. From today, your story has changed. Amen. No one will talk down on your family again. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. your family is liberated Amen. by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That curse is broken. Amen. Every charm has been uprooted. Amen. I've sent angels, angels. Uproot every charm. Put in your house, in your village, Amen. in your business. Amen. Dig it all out. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are free. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Clap for Jesus, somebody. You may go back to your seat. Thank you.
Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I'm just making sure the online video turned out great. Okay, good. God bless you, my my darling daughter Elena, for such a wonderful video. It's not easy. And thank God for Pastor for the best internet. The best Wi-Fi. Our video has been crispy clear. How do you guys feel? I see a lot of demons, manifestation, and everything. It's okay. That's why you came. But there are some that cause distractions. When you're just about to pray this time. I, I, I recognize those ones. It is well. Who has a special number or testimony? Raise your hand up. Who has a special number or testimony? Anyone? What is that? What do you have? Do you have testimony or special? Come on, sweetie. Where is my other mic? Minister Stanley, your job. I don't want to go back home the same way that I came out. Touch me with your hand. Jesus. What do you have? Special number of testimony. Special number. You watch the video soon? Yes. Really? What's your name? Come to your screen. It's so, it's so low. This mic. Did you it? Frank. 2016. This mic doesn't work. Please give us volume. It's not, it's not loud. Come and stand here, sweetie. On this side. Uh -huh. So that she can cover you too. Okay, that one is better. Thank you, guys. Alright, go ahead. She says, you said since what? 2016. You mean, when I started preaching, you were following me. When you talk, we can hear him, but we can Yeah, and um, since around 16, even if, anytime I open my, when it started, anytime I open my Facebook, the video will just come up, and I'll try to remove it. You know, I enjoy it. So if people come in, come in, sometimes I just watch it some minutes, I, I leave it. So nobody invites me to you, but God keeps bringing me to close to you. I don't know what happened. Sometimes I, I don't want to open my Facebook, but immediately my, the God will just say me, Take your phone. I open my phone. The book, the, the video will come up. Uh. I just start watching it. So in 2017, I keep on watching. 2018, when I was pregnant with my daughter, you prayed for me, but you didn't know when you were blessing what I love it. I was following all through, and God really helped me. No one keep on doing it. Right, safely. A lot of things happening, but I just need God to know that I'm still alive today. Amen. I did not give up. When I heard your story about your ex and everything, exactly my story. But I just think what I'm still alive today. And I can be able to, I just came in. We are just two hours walking around looking for the church. But I just think God as I'm here. You are here. I bring my bag and I just want to check in. I said, no, I'm not checking in. Let me just come first. Oh, you are never checking to your hotel. No, I my You're coming from where? From time here, from Big Fed. This journey is very big. Oh. The church is almost filled up. Oh. My God, we have a lot of people coming. Is that, eh, look at it. Hey. What's her name again from um, Italy? What's her name? Obi! You came all the way from people from Italy. I've seen some people from Italy. Even, uh, is it Elisa? Where are you, sweetie? You came again. This one was crying when I was leaving Italy. You, you said by fire by force, he was pastor. Even like the church down there, full of people from Italy. I just left there now. Why are you coming again? They can't get enough. Wow, this is amazing. I guess my people follow me to Dublin, 